Hi everyone, my name is Karen. This is my channel, Rather Be Reading, and today I'm bringing to you a recent reads video. It has been a week since I last checked in for a recent reads video, um, and it was not the most successful of reading weeks. I read four things, but we did have Christmas and all that. I was finished up work for the year, had Christmas, all of that going on, so it was a busier time of year um, but I did still read four things so let's jump straight in and talk about the four books that I did manage to complete over this past week. So the first book that I completed um, this past week was The Pact by Dawn Goodwin. This is a um, neck alley, one of my neck alley arts so it is a digital copy that I received in exchange for an honest review. This is a adult thriller. We're forming a character named Maddie who has a very um, unusual kind of situation going on in her personal life. So she was married to a man um, for several years, like quite a lengthy period of time. They met when they were like reasonably young, like in their like very early 20s, have been together ever since, were together for quite a long amount of time. Um, they have had a lot of struggles with infertility um, and that has caused a lot of stresses in their marriage. It's been going on for a really, really, really long time. They've had several... Um, unsuccessful pregnancies. So they haven't, uh, to be fair, I, I shouldn't probably say, infertility is probably the incorrect word, although I'm not sure exactly what the right terminology is. They haven't had problems getting pregnant. They've had troubles staying pregnant. So um, the, Maddie has suffered a lot of miscarriages, which has not only wreaked havoc on their relationship, but also on her mental health situation. A lot of issues going on. <sighs> her husband then ended up having an affair um, and got another woman pregnant and he is now separated from Maddie and her husband have now separated and he is living with the new girlfriend and the new baby. Um, and they are um, still very much involved in each other's lives um, to the point where in some ways you could say, oh, it's good that they've managed to stay in each other's lives. But in other ways, it's a very unhealthy relationship. Anyway, so Maddie has ended up leaving their family home and she's moved into a flat um, and she has an upstairs neighbor named Jade, who is a young mother, a young single mother of a like three year old son. Um, they get to talking one night over quite a few glasses of wine type of situation. And Jade makes what Maddie thinks is an offhand joke about that they should take care of each other's problems. Um, Jade is worried about some custody problems that are possibly going to come up with custody of her son. Um, Judo, the father of her child, and um, Maddie's upset with a lot of to do with the situation with her and her ex um, husband. And well, sorry, not ex because they're not actually divorced, they're just separated, I guess. And he's got a new girlfriend and a new baby. And the situation all kind of kicks off from there. This was, I had up and down feelings about this one. So I was very frustrated with the main character, with Maddie. She was incredibly like naive in a lot of ways like she's being manipulated um both intentionally and unintentionally like emotionally manipulated in like a lot of different ways and she's just like completely like ignorant to all of it and it was very frustrating um and I understand like you know that she's got things going on like the fact that she has always longed for a child and now she has forged this friendship with someone who has a young son and she a lot about what she does is because she doesn't want to lose that contact with the um, friend's son, not really to do with the friend itself. Um, you know, there's a lot of psychological issues going on there. Um, but it was still very frustrating to read because like things would happen and you just go, is this not a giant red flag just like going off in your mind? Of, like this is not like something that normal people do, so on and so forth. Um, having said that, the ending was, so not the very end, because I'll talk about that in a minute, but the kind of, wrap up to all of the like thrillery mystery elements I thought was pretty well done there was a few things in there that I hadn't picked up on in the story that I thought were pretty well done um then however the like part that comes after kind of the resolution of that the like kind of what happens next part wasn't a fan of because it falls into a trope that I I don't want to say what the trope is because it would be spoilery but I had some real issues with it um but overall it was like an enjoyable read and I ended up giving it 3.5 stars um, I then listened on audio to Terra Nullius by Claire G. Coleman. This is a book by an Australian Indigenous um, woman um, that very much focuses on Indigenous life um, in Australia. Um, it is set um, in Australia. We have um, 
native people who are um and we have natives and we have settlers and it is very much set like to do a lot with um the colonial time period so on I can't talk too much about exactly what happens in this book because there is a certain point in the novel where something is revealed that really changes the whole course of like what this book is about not what it's about but the way what it's about is framed if that makes sense um and I can't talk about that because that would be a spoiler but that was excellent what Claire G Coleman has done with that was because I will admit that happens at about like 45% of the way through the book I think when we get to that point the first that first portion of the book I was really struggling to connect to the writing to any of the characters so we're following a lot of different characters in this setting we're following a native boy named Jackie who has been basically living as a slave who has escaped and is on the run we're following like a nun um a settler nun who is very pious and believes that the natives are completely beneath um the settlers and is you know that old chestnut we also follow a we just follow a lot of we also follow a um I can't remember what the word is for it but like someone who's tracking um Jackie who is the boy who was a slave who has escaped a lot of different things going on um, and I was really struggling to connect to any of the characters or to any of the storylines like the writing just really like kind of held me at a distance when we got to that point of the turning kind of point of the novel I was very much like wow okay like this is really excellent I didn't like it really did like change things for me having said that I still think that the way that that lens that you get frames the novel is incredible so incredibly well done by the author but I still through the second half of the novel still wasn't really connected to any of the storylines even with the new kind of frame put on them or any of that so um, I struggled with this one a little bit some things about it I thought were truly excellent and other parts I didn't like vibe with as well and I ended up giving it 3.25 stars I would highly recommend though I wish I could talk about like what this author did but I can't because it would be a spoiler but it is excellent um, and that was narrated on audio by Mark Coles Smith and Tamala Shelton um, the next book was another one that I also listened on audio which is The Anatomy of Wings by Karen Foxley this is another um audio audio another Australian book is the word I was looking for this is I'm not even really sure of what the target audience is for this the narrator who we're getting the story like provided through is a 10 year old girl but it is not a middle grade novel it I believe is flagged on Goodreads as being YA and it could be described as YA but I think also it could just be considered so it's either like YA contemporary or like even just like adult women's fiction with the um 10 year old narrator so it's set in a small mining town in Australia in the mid 80s I think time kind of time range and we're basically following um this character who we know at the beginning that her sister her older sister who I think was like 14 or 15 at the time has died um, and we basically get the two time frames of the implications of her death and the true like devastating effects that it has on um, the main character's family um, and all of the repercussions of that but then we also go back to several months before the death of her sister leading up to the death of the sister to kind of find out what led um to her death because we very much see a picture of um a girl kind of unraveling um some really some issues that were really i'm um, like um, like you can tell that she's got some like depressive issues that were not like well well they weren't I mean it was a different time but even now I don't know they didn't present in a way that's necessarily like a huge um point that people would necessarily pick up on that that's what was going on because it's very much framed in that she starts to become very promiscuous although I will straight up say trigger warning for rape some of the things that happen at the start of the novel are straight up rape to me they're not consensual sexual things but she does then become very promiscuous starts to dabble in a lot of smoking drinking doing drugs a lot of that and all of that as a result of a lot of depressive issues that she's having um and the kind of spiral out of control that she has as a teenager stops going to school all of those types of issues um and we're seeing it through the lens of her 10 year old sister the thing that annoyed me a little bit with the 10 year old sister's narration is not like I actually thought it was kind of an interesting lens to put on it that you're seeing it from the innocent perspective of she sees things but she doesn't always understand exactly what those things mean in context 
Um, but then there are scenes that happen that there's no way that this 10 year old narrator could be aware of. Like we get scenes like from the sister, for example, from pre her death um, of things that happened to her that there's just literally no way that anyone, let alone the 10 year old sister would be aware of. And that was a little bit annoying because I thought if you wanted to go with this like first person, I, I shouldn't say first person because I don't know if it's first person. I can't recall. Um, but through the story told from the perspective of this character, but then you want to put in scenes and they're told as if the sister was there, but you know that she wasn't there. Like there's scenes that there's no way she could be there for. I don't know. That just didn't always work for me. Um, there's also kind of a speculative sprinkling in there that's kind of put in there at the start, but it's never really like explained or like comes to fruition. Um, so that was a little bit frustrating. I will say it did feel very Australian. Um, the narrator, um, I don't, and I don't know who narrated this. The, this book is not on Audible on any like audio platform I could find online to like check who the narrator is. And my library for some reason for this book does not list a narrator. So I just, I don't know who narrated this, but it felt very Australian in the, um, the accent, the language, like everything about this felt very Australian as an Australian reader. And I did enjoy that. Um, but overall this book was like kind of just okay for me. And I ended up giving it three stars. And then the final book that I read this week was The Raising by Laura... I'm not sure how to pronounce this, Kashishki? I'm probably butchering that. Um, this is an adult, I think mystery is probably the genre that I would go with for this. We're basically following, so right at the start, we are with a professor, not a professor, she's not a professor, we're with a woman who, we come to find out later that she works at a university, but she witnesses a car accident um, and we we come to find out very quickly that the girl who was in the car accident has died um but that the all the reports in the newspaper from police and things of what happened don't match up with what the woman who was the first on the scene what she recalls from the accident um it's then about a year later or well this all happened in like this the girl who died it was and the other some of the other characters in here it was their freshman year at college and we then kind of jumped to the sophomore um sophomore yes yeah, sophomore year of college um and get the after results of when the whole university is kind of in mourning there's been a lot of calls so the person who was driving during the car accident was the um girl's boyfriend and he has been absolutely vilified people saying that it was his fault that he murdered her like through being the cause of the car accident um there was calls for him to be expelled from the the college so on and so forth and so we get it with the after effects. We do also get some time periods kind of before leading up to the events of the um, like car accident, but it very much becomes kind of a ghostly mystery in that there are people who are reporting that they are still seeing um, the um, girl who died around campus. And that's kind of what this story is about for the most part. This one did not work for me. That premise sounds great. This cover, first off, gives you nothing at all about what this story is. This story was, let me first say, incredibly compelling. This is like 460 pages. It's a lengthier novel. I was felt that it, the story was just weird and strange the whole way through. I was very frustrated the whole way through, and yet I couldn't stop reading. I just kept reading because everything was so confusing and so strange that I was just like, but what's happening um, and kept turning the pages, just trying to figure out like what was going on. It became pretty clear to me like what was happening, but I didn't understand why stuff was happening or like how it was happening. Um, I will say though, you don't get any solid answers to any of those questions. It was like the author just didn't know how to answer those questions because she knew, quite frankly, I feel that there was no way that she could answer those questions in a way that made any kind of human sense. And so she just didn't even try. And then she just jumped to like a one year later situation. And I was just like, what? Very, very, very annoying because the whole reason that I was turning the pages was to like get those answers. And then you just really don't get any answers. So I was quite frankly, at the end of this, I was a bit pissed off. Um, so in the end, I gave this 2.5 stars. That is it. Those are the four books that I read. I'm not going to talk too much about a currently reading section because I'm actually filming this. I normally film on a Saturday. I'm filming this on the Sunday. Um, and I wasn't actually currently reading anything at that time yesterday, but I've like since read other things since then. So like it all just wouldn't make sense in the context of this video. So uh, not a lot to report on the currently reading front, but a very like lower ranks. 
it has potentially, for those of you who are following my uh, journey this month to maybe hit my Goodreads goal, I believe this puts me at somewhere like having to read um, 15 books in, I think, six or seven days. Yeah, I don't know how we're going to go with that. Um, I am now, Christmas is over. Um, I'm off work. I'm not going back to work until next year. So like, I have a lot of time on my hands, but that is still a lot of books to get read. So can I do it? I honestly don't know. I think not, but I'm hopeful at the same time. We'll see. Um, I would love to chat with you guys in the comments down below if you've read any of these books and have any thoughts on them or if you want to chat to me about what you guys have been reading recently. I hope everyone had a fantastic Christmas if you guys were celebrating Christmas or just had a hopefully you managed to have some time off due to Christmas even if you don't celebrate and that you guys have just had a great relaxing time. For those of you who were able to see family, um, I hope that that re went really well for everyone. I understand obviously that a lot of people were not able to celebrate with families this year the way that they normally would have. Um, my family was very separated this year. Um, due to non-COVID related circumstances. But yeah, I hope everyone had a great holiday period um, and that they're looking forward to having some more time off, hopefully towards the end of the year and going into early next year, because I know I am. But yeah, I would love to chat with you guys in the comments down below. Please like this video if you liked it. Please subscribe if you want to see more from my channel. That is all I have for this video today. Bye guys.